Hello, I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. Earlier today, I had the opportunity to speak with Kim Wyman, Washington Secretary of State, and this is our conversation. So uh, there was a number of reforms that Washington State went, went through back in February. Um, can you give me some highlights of um, what those were and how they affected this uh, um, election season? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Washington is like so many states has just been reforming everything. Uh, in 2018, new laws went into effect, um, were passed by the legislature and went into effect in 2019, allowing, allowing for same day voter registration, meaning anyone can come into an election office right up until eight o'clock election day and register and vote. Uh, automatic registration when people get their driver's licenses and um, pre-registration or we, what we call future voter program, future sign up of 16 and 17 year olds. And so those laws went into effect in 2019, but this is our very first uh, presidential year to enact them. Uh, we have been, of course, like every state, focusing on cybersecurity. So we have a uh, cybersecurity center in, in my office that's really supporting the counties. That's uh, newer in the last couple of years. And then finally, we have a, a statewide voter registration system called VOWA, which is really the backbone and has allowed us to, to enact these laws and have the, the compensating security measures in place because now the counties can actually, in live time, compare. And so if you had, uh, had uh, walked into an election office on election day at five o'clock, they can pull up um, that record and see if you've already returned a ballot or not. And if you Excellent. haven't, they can issue one. And uh, it, it's really empowering. Excellent. Um, and does your state um, have voting centers, um, countywide registration, digital registration systems? Uh, we we do. We have uh, 39 counties here in Washington state for our 4.7 million registered voters as of today. Um, and so uh, each one of those counties has to have at least one voting center option in their county. Many have more than that. And uh, and so about one to two percent of our voters will come in to vote in person uh, during the voting period. And uh, that's across the state and obviously mostly in our, our big population centers like Seattle and King County area. But, um, um, it, you know, we need to allow them to be able to have an assistive device to mark their ballot and maybe get a replacement ballot or um, or register and vote for the first time. So we have that in person uh, facilities. Our, our counties have actually adapted most of those to a drive up uh, curbside sort of pickup of ballots. And it's just for those voters that need to mark their ballots with an assistive device that have to go into a building. Excellent. Um, in the concept of a prov provisional ballot, I assume is um, is uh, accurate in Washington State uh, for same day, same day registration. Um, it gets adjudicated by the elections officials to um, determine its uh, authenticity, <laughs> I can say it. <laughs> yes, um, yes, we do have provisional ballots. That's the final fail safe. But I think with same day registration, I will be surprised if we have any of significant number. Basically, uh, um, uh, that, that provisional ballot would maybe be someone who comes in election day and doesn't have um, doesn't have their ID. They don't have their driver's license or their uh, Washington State ID card or the last four of their social security number. So we wouldn't be able to check and verify their their um, information as we at the time we register them. So we would we would give them an, a provisional ballot that would be hold, held until we could verify that information. Oh, so it, so yeah. To make this clear, because it wasn't clear to me initially, um, that uh, the same day registration that Washington state runs is actually you do uh, basically inline adjudication of the person's identity to, um, so that doesn't have to be done after the fact, which is I assume most the case in most states. Yes, and, and that was really, that's one of the reasons why we worked very hard to bring up this uh, voter registration system so that the counties would have that real time or close to real time uh, data where, you know, they enter the information for the voter and it's going and it's verifying it against the State Department of Licensing in real time. And then they can actually issue a live ballot to the voter and it can be counted. And now after election day, you don't have more work to do. Is that available county to county to, I would assume that would be a fraud limiting device as well. If I went from one county to the next, you'd say, no, you already voted um, with that ID. Would that be the case? That's that's exactly, you're hitting, hitting the whole reason that we did uh, 
brought up the vote was system. It was a this was a collaborative effort of 40 independently elected officials and hundreds of election uh, workers across the state that that built this system. And a lot of it was to have those kinds of security measures to really balance out that wide open access of anyone being able to register and vote on election day. So I think we hit a good balance between those two things and uh, we'll put it to the test in November. Excellent. Well, that's exciting. Well, very good luck on that. Uh, this almost sounds like it's getting closer to, um, or maybe even surpassing, is Utah, where they've had um, essentially a registration system uh, via the driver's license. I'm probably not going to get this perfect, but um, uh, it sounds almost like uh, this is more flexible, uh, even more accessible, because I assume if I'm going to register for a driver's license, which uh, registers me to vote in Utah, um, apologies to Utah if I'm getting this slightly inaccurate. Um, this uh, this would be even uh, easier to register um, than that type of model. Yeah, I, you know, and like you, I'm not totally familiar with Utah's laws, but yes, here in Washington, when you get a driver's license uh, or ID card, you're going to be asked if you want to register to vote. If you're getting a real ID card, which in our state we call an enhanced driver's license mm -hmm. um, or ID card, uh, that's where you've actually proven citizenship. So here in Washington, if you get one of those IDs, you're automatically registered to vote and you have okay. to opt out. And so, um, oh, and, okay. and it makes sense so because- somewhere we can verify all four elements of the requirements for re voter registration with that uh, citizenship check. So, um, it, you know, it, it, why wouldn't we register people that were eligible? Hmm. Uh, well, it, without uh, slandering any other states, um, uh, have any other states uh, um, uh, talked to you guys, either through NASD or NAS, uh, of what you guys have been working on? And uh, is it proposed to be adopted in other states? Oh, we, certainly we talked to our colleagues across the country and, you know, I, I think there is going to be interest after this, uh, this election. And this is, of course, I'm knocking wood. Good Lord willing that, uh, that the election goes smoothly, but, uh, with you there. <laughs> yes. um, but, uh, yeah, basically I don't think there's an election official in the country that would want to bring up a new system in a presidential election year. None of us wanted to do that before COVID. And, uh, after the, uh, everything that's happened in 2020, that was a really smart move. We were really pushing just to get ours up in 2019. And quite frankly, I look back now and it was a controversial decision that I made to go forward with the system because we had a lot of work to do, had bugs with it, you know, as any new technology does. We were on the paper for about a month with uh, every detailing every little thing that went wrong, but right. we knew that we needed to do it so we would have it in place this year. And I'm so glad we went through that pain and suffering because we're ready for it now. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, there's a, there's no good system or no perfect system, but um, obviously it, it sounds like you, you guys are very prepared. So that's, uh, I'll be exciting to hear um, not only the results of uh, success of your election, but also um, how other states can learn and adopt um, the best parts and hopefully the whole system of what you guys, the good work you've done. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lincoln Shorts.